I call the meeting to order of the October 16 planning board meeting. Um, we have a couple items on our agenda tonight. First item is approval of minutes from September 18. Any comments, corrections, questions? A motion? Motion to approve the minutes. I have a motion to approve. Second. Second. Jim, seconds. Okay. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Uh, it's unanimous. All right. Full business. Haynes Private Access Way. Stephen and Jennifer Haynes are requesting a private access way permit to create frontage for an existing lot located at 28 Woodland Road, private access way permit, public hearing tonight. Would uh, you like to give us a, an update on uh, where things stand? Sure. Uh, my name is Bob Metcalf. I'm with Mitchell Associates. I'm representing Mr. Haynes on this application. Uh, just a slide here. Oh, excuse me, Bob. Uh, your microphone. You want to put that right near you. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Oh, a little bit better. Okay, I'll stand right up to it. I didn't want to stand. Right. Um, I'm going to start here. Basically, since the uh, September 18th meeting, we were with the board. Uh, we had submitted a letter uh, responding to all the comments that we received from staff, and all those plans were revised and submitted, and then we received a second set of plans, um, comments, on the October 10th, and I believe uh, Maureen has provided you with a, uh, a letter responding to those, and we've made all the changes. Uh, one of the things that we had done uh, when we had the site walk, there was concern regarding the uh, vegetative buffer that can be retained within the setback area, and uh, voted us just to go out and evaluate the existing trees. Went out and identified the trees that were out there. There were a number of them that there weren't as many within the buffer, defined buffer areas. We thought they all fall pretty much within the building window envelope. Some of the ones that were in that outside area, in the buffer area, uh, were not in the greatest of conditions. The concern would be taking down the number of trees for the home, constructing the home and their improvements uh, could subsequently turn out to be a blowdown situation. Could go either way to the new house or to an abutter. So we've identified just about five trees that can actually be saved within that and then provided a planting plan. And I will go over that uh, as we move forward. So, um, this is just you know a couple of the shots of what were the existing conditions out there and showing most of the trees uh, we're able to save or were identified on the sidewalk. The majority of what we're looking at straight in front of us, those trees would have to go, uh, those on the right. The one on the left-hand side would be able to stay, and as you get further down towards the uh, where the boat trailer is, we start losing the ones in the end of where the roadway would actually go. There was one tree. Uh, there was one. There are two trees that are on this side that we're able to retain, even with the grading that was going on, and then there's one on this side that we'll be able to save and I'll go over some of the others around the, the building windows and go to the landscape plan. Uh, one of the comments that uh, we'd received was to make sure we'd identify the building window uh, for the house, and we've identified that on the revised plans that we will submit after tonight's meeting. Um, the other was some information regarding the dimension for the depth of the paved apron area. The dimension actually was on the plan, but I think there was just so many notes in this corner, it was probably missed, so we've made that uh, clarification on the plan itself. Um, one of the other comments uh, was in regards to the, uh, the uh, several notes regarding the sewer connections. Uh, there were four notes identified in Mr. Harding's uh, memo uh, that Maureen also provided uh, follow-up on that uh, we've actually made those no changes. There were four. They were in reference to the requirements to, uh, for the sewer connection to be reviewed by the public works director or his designee, and then the actual installation during the field work on that. Remember the, uh, whoop. Just an X. You broke it. I broke it. It's a little red dot, just X in it. <clears throat> no, 
go over to the left. Yeah. Over left, left. See that little red dot? Oh, a little bit more. Yeah, we're going right there. Okay, there. There we go. Now I lost it. Technical difficulties. Double click. Here we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, the, uh, as we said, there were no, several notes uh, regarding the sewer. There were asked to be added to the plan. Those notes have been added. Uh, there was an additional request for a note regarding the access over uh, what uh, is the private access way. Uh, per state stat standards, the uh, right of way, uh, what was formally identified as Highland Road, which is on an 1892 recorded plan, uh, because it preceded zoning, uh, there still are rights to have access to that fire abutted. So a note was asked if you put on the plan, we have added that note to the plan regarding the accessibility off of that uh, particular right of way. That, that standard actually applies the full length of what was identified as Highland. So everything from Highland, from Woodland, Woodland all the way to Charles actually, that would apply to. Because on the 1892 plan, that actually shows all the way through to Charles. Um, we also, um, and the other one was in regards to the existing uh, sewer manhole that was buried and actually is roughly in this location here. It just falls right up, actually falls on a right white line. A note that that would be raised to grade when the actual uh, dry vapor is put in, so that note has been added to the plan. The other changes we made to the plan is the landscape plan that was requested. Uh, when we went out to evaluate uh, the existing trees within that buffer area, this strip right along here, which is along the Norris property line, actually is just about completely grassed in and has been maintained as a lawn area by uh, the Norrises. Uh, the proposed buffering along that side is going to be a solid six foot high either wood fence or PVC fence that will run from this corner up to this corner here. Uh, there's an existing red maple in this corner here that we'll be able to save. Uh, around the rest of the perimeter, this is going to give me grief tonight. We're looking at some evergreens in here. It's going to be a mixture of some evergreen trees where it's significant to try and screen the butter as well as the, the, the new owner of the property here and some along some evergreens here and then we have a mixture with some deciduous trees and some deciduous shrubs. The shrubs were selected and the trees were selected as being native species, tolerable for the type of conditions that they'd be growing in, uh, are really selected for some real seasonal character between flowering, texture, uh, fall color. So it gives kind of a wider variety in terms of it just being an evergreen buffer all the way around or a fence. Uh, and then on this side of the property, there were a couple of larger maples we were able to identify as potentially worth saving. And then we've been filled the other areas, as I said, with some additional uh, evergreens and uh, deciduous material. There is one tree that we looked at when we had the site walk, and that's a rather substantial maple that's probably got a rock core. It's about as tall as I am if you go from the base of the tree up. Uh, and I dare say that 60% of that tree actually leans into the Haynes property. And the concern would be with all the removal of trees on the Haynes lot, opening that up for uh, for the canopy would be very susceptible to a blowdown. Uh, and we're suggesting that that should come down. It straddles the property line, so I guess it comes down to a question uh, that we'll be working with the abutter on that. Uh, but for safety purposes all the way around, uh, we feel as though that tree should come down. Uh, the planting that will occur within the, uh, the rain garden will provide that additional buffering along that side. I didn't show that in this plan. It's in uh, the detail that we'd submitted with the original submission for the rain garden. So uh, overall, I believe we responded to the comments uh, that Mr. Harding had uh, and that Maureen had. 
Uh, the last time around, we had asked for a temporary wa a waiver for the water district uh, to sign off uh, when we had met with Chief Gleason regarding the residential fire suppression system for the house. He had given us uh, the NFPA code. Uh, when we contacted the water district, they said it required an individual line only for that and a system design and then commented back to me that that's, and then we talked to a uh, sprinkler designer and he said that code's for a multifamily or an apartment building. So we returned to Chief Gleason, talked to him and he had actually given us the wrong number. So we corrected that. We now have the letter from the water district that they can serve. I submitted that to Maureen the other day. I, I have one copy if you need it for the file. So we no longer need that waiver. We do have the letter for our serviceability for code one. I think that pretty much covers where we have taken the project since uh, our last meeting. And uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I'll now open up the meeting for public comment, uh, public hearing, excuse me. And uh, I ask that if you, if you wish to speak, come to the podium, <coughs> state your name and your street address and you, you have three minutes and Maureen will be the timer. And uh, if anyone would like to speak, please come forward. Good evening, my name is Brad Norris, uh, 26 Woodland Road, uh, The one of the uh, probably most affected abutters of the property. Um, I, I sit here tonight and I really wonder how we got here. Um, I went through and I did some research and I got into the code. And item one, scope, purpose, and definitions, 19-1-2. It says to prevent overcrowding of real estate, to promote a wholesome home environment, to conserve natural and cultural resources, and to enhance the value of property. I don't know how this development applies to any of those principles for the reasons these codes were written in the first place. And as far as enhancing value, it's where every abutting property, property is gonna lose property value with this development. Um, it also goes on to say in uh, under general standards, it's the codes are designed to preserve open space in rural character. And once again, I just don't see how that meets that criteria. It also goes on under non-conformance. It is the intent of this ordinance to promote land use conformities. And this is anything but a conformity. Every other property in, the, in, this, in this development is on a street, not in everybody's backyard. Uh, and then it goes on to state that it will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. Well, if anybody's ever been there and seen all the kids that play in this back, in this yard, you would see that it is absolutely gonna change the character of the neighborhood. Absolutely, without any question. Uh, furthermore, under general standards, it says that the planning board allows to approve the development of an individual lot lacking the required street frontage if adequate access is provided to the lot. The development is carried out in a manner that minimizes the impact on adjacent properties and is consistent with sound neighborhood development. Once again, I, I just don't see where that means that. Uh, uh, we continue to have concerns with water, um, we have invested a very substantial amount of money in our backyard. And I have seen situations where a house goes in, a good friend of mine had one across the street, two doors down, they built the house and suddenly he had water all over his backyard. Um, and it, you know, the, the, the fact that no official studies have been gone, done, it's a hunch by some engineers Really, I mean, nobody's done any real research as to what's gonna happen. And then I ask, 
What is my recourse if suddenly I have water in my basement that's been dry for the 12 years we've lived there? What recourse do I have if suddenly my yard becomes a soggy, moppy area that's not suitable to, to play on and so forth? Um, wh where do I turn at that point? What, what is my recourse? Um, this is the only opportunity is to make sure it's done right. Um, and with all due respect to the board, I do take exception to the last meeting when the applicant did not ask for a waiver for those calculations, but a board member asked if he would like to get the waiver, and then it was approved. And I really take exception to that particular uh, protocol. I don't. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think that was appropriate. So, you know, we're very proud to live in a beautiful area. Um, to me, the most, one of the most beautiful towns in the world. And, uh, and we just want to keep it that way, that's all. Um, you know, with all due respect to my neighbor, you know, I'm sorry that, we, that we're opposing this. Um, we had hoped to go in as a neighborhood and acquire the property, um, but that couldn't happen because he purchased it instead. And now here we are looking at this major development. Um, I also have concerns with the landscaping plan. Um, I certainly appreciate that there'd be a fence put across my backyard, but across where the cars are going to be coming down several times daily, I have no protection across where, where my living and dining room is. Um, there's no landscaping shown along there. Um, there's, you know, they, they put trees all around the rest of the property, but not one between mine and that abutting property as well. Um, a, you know, a six foot fence, you know, I'm sorry, from my house, it's, it's a, a six foot fence, um, I'm gonna look right over that. It's not, that's not gonna block a single thing for me. Um, privacy is a major issue here. If this plan goes forward, um, then I've, I've got real concerns with both the, the water flow from floods I mean, if you have seen it there when it's raining, you need to wrap it up. and the, yeah, and and the uh, once again the the uh, privacy issues. So thank you again. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Uh, good evening, uh, Mark Mercer. I live at 17 Charles 17 Charles Road, which uh, I'm the abutter with the square that pushes in up to the um, so-called rain garden. And I just have a question about, um, you know, what options do homeowners have if it turns out that rain, rain garden either can't handle the flow, either normal or, you know, overflow storm conditions, or just in the course of, uh, as the water, you know, finds a new um, spot to settle. I mean, the water table in that area is very close to the surface uh, of the ground. And in, in the spring, early spring, there's like a, um, there's a pond of water right at the end of that driveway. So is there any recourse that, you know, does the town have any responsibility if, you know, we find out that it's like a permanently wet spot that was formerly dry in that square? We'll make notes when we, we don't have, just looking for comment and we'll respond to your Okay, comment, appreciate it. That, that's my main concern. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Hi, I'm uh, Derek Converse. I live at 11 Charles. I'm uh, the top right corner, if you will. Um, the only comment I have is kind of echoing what the both of them said is just the concerns with the uh, surface water runoff. So um, I don't know much about the pro uh, project itself. So I'd just be wanting to make sure that wherever impervious areas are added, that somehow that's treated either through a stormwater system or it looks like a rain garden system. I just want to make sure that that works because it does get wet down there. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? My name is Renee Norris, 26 Woodland Road. Um, when we were trying to acquire this property as a neighborhood to keep it as an association for all to share, and um, it was quickly bought up by a gentleman, Mr. Haynes, that said he wanted to buy it 
so that the property would remain as it is. I, I fear that, that once we start um, breaking up the neighborhood free spaces, how many free spaces in Cape Elizabeth will be broken up? Um, it, to me, it's detrimental to neighborhoods to have spaces that keep our privacy private. Um, and two, my property does have two sides abutting uh, Mr. Haynes' property or the future buyer's property. And we have been maintaining that since we've lived there, keeping it clear, as clear as we can for the kids and the, the walkways. It just, to me, is, um, as my husband pointed out, that it's your responsibility to, to react to this as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. I'm just standing up. Okay, just need to stand? Yeah. All right. Um, <coughs> Maureen, can you help us with response to some of the questions and concerns? Well, the question on uh, what what is the recourse? Well, there's two things. Uh, the first thing is the town uh, takes responsibility for enforcing the plan that the planning board approves. So during construction, um, the applicant will be responsible to post a performance guarantee that they will construct the project as approved. They will be responsible for paying an inspection fee and the town takes that money and we pay the town's engineer to go out there and do inspections. So it's an independent inspection system. Um, after it's inspected, after the determination is made that the project is complete as approved, uh, the town's responsibility pretty much ends. And at that point, if for some reason uh, private property owners feel that they have been damaged by this property, it is a civil matter between private property owners. That's the only question. Um, the other questions, well, Mr. Norris uh, cited several sections in the zoning ordinance. Um, he cited um, he cited a lot of sections that are basically preamble, introductory statements that um, head into specific standards. So, for example, um, you know, Article Two that 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 this doesn't that you the. The ordinance is supposed to enhance property values. I mean, that's a, that's a general purpose statement for the town's reason to impose regulation on, other, on private property, and that you don't use those purpose statements as an enforcement tool. What you then is you keep reading into that section and you find into it specific standards. So, you know, general standards that we want to preserve open space. Well, we do want to preserve open space. And if you go deeper into section 1972, which the planning board is very familiar with because you use it all the time, it has very specific standards about how much open space has to be preserved. And by the way, that section applies to subdivisions, not a private access way permit. Um, under the non-conforming provisions, it says the purpose of the non-conforming section is to promote conformities. That is absolutely true. But within that section, it also says, however, where we have non-conformities, this is how we're going to handle them. And in Cape Elizabeth, when you have a lot of record, that's a lot that was created before, it's a lot that was created and at the time it was created, it complied with any zoning that was then in place, which might have been no zoning, or it might have been zoning that isn't the current zoning. So when you create the lot, if it's a legally created lot and subsequent changes to the zoning ordinance have made it non-conforming, that means you created an 8,000 square foot lot with 40 feet of frontage on a private road and the town later adopts regulations that says you need 20,000 square feet with 100 feet on a public road, it becomes a non-conforming law. It doesn't comply with the current standards. Well, the non-conforming provisions in the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance still allow those lots to be built upon under certain circumstances, and those circumstances are spelled out in detail. For example, um, 
if you have a lot that doesn't have sufficient frontage on a town accepted road, you can go into section 1979, which is where the private access way standards are, and obtain an approval that reviews the driveway, and that is a substitute recognized in the ordinance for having the full amount of frontage. And I, I realize that um, under section 7, 7, 1979, um, the quote was that you're supposed to be minimizing the impact on adjacent properties. Well, it doesn't say eliminate the impact on adjacent properties. It says that you are supposed to design your lot so that you can reduce the impacts to the extent reasonable while still allowing the private property owner to develop their property. So, I, I mean, we can go on. I think I should stop. Okay. <laughs> but I think those are the, the questions that got raised that, got, that were brought up. But if I missed anything, feel free. Okay. Doesn't the comprehensive plan promote infill development too? It is absolutely, yes. Infill development is identified as a major tool of preserving open space. Because the idea is if you have a subdivision that's been approved or been recorded, you have uh, a town accepted road, you have public water, public sewer already in the road, the impact for developing these, these leftover lots is much smaller than if you were to go and develop, say, a farm field on Sperwing Gap. So we actually do promote new development going into infill areas rather than going into the outlying areas of the town. Thank you. Does the board want to weigh in on any questions? I guess I remember on our site visit and looking at the plans, in my opinion, the uh, drainage seemed to be very well addressed. If the the rain pond was, the, the, if I'm using the right term, I can't remember. There is a scupper that overflows to the existing grate, as I remember, right? So, it is, um, so on those 100 year storms or whatever, it has a place to go. Correct. And uh, you've got the pipe, you've got the riprap that brings it to the pond, you've got enough depth. Um, to me, it seemed, again, in my opinion, the drainage seemed to be addressed well. Go ahead, Peter. <coughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I sympathize with some of the comments of the neighbors. It's always hard when you have a lot that's been sitting out there and has been kind of a, almost like a quasi-public uh, area that all the, the neighbors, kids complain and so forth, and it's, it, it hurts to see it go away or be developed. Uh, so I, I sympathize with their plight. At the same time, we have to balance the interest of the owner of that piece of property, and, and they don't necessarily have to be philanthropists and dedicated to the public. What we do as a planning board, I think, and the site walk was quite helpful, is to look at it and uh, satisfy ourselves that the the uh, the buffering would be appropriate to protect the neighbor, to minimize the, the visual impact on the neighbors of this new uh, parcel. The, that part of Woodland Road, certainly the houses are not separated by great distance. The lateral privacy on, the, on Woodland Road um, is not uh, protected anyway by, by a lot of forestry, but I think there is a, a, a planting plan presented as we requested, and the fencing for the Norris property is certainly going to alleviate um, some of the visual impact on the, that the neighbors are concerned about. So I, I, my own reaction is that the applicant seems to have made a good faith effort to uh, make use of their property in a responsible way and try to minimize the impact on the neighbors. And I hope the neighbors can keep, take that into account as they sort of viscerally don't care for the fact that this lot is going to have a house on it, what they want, so the applicant wants to put a house on it at some point. Joe? Um, I agree with Jim in that uh, from the site visit, looking at the condition of the uh, drainage patterns and what um, uh, Bob has shown on the uh, drainage plan, I think that it is going to be a big improvement. Um, one question I have for Maureen is, uh, can, can we, and then the question for the board is, should we require more buffer between the Norris property and the right of way that uh, 
Mr. Norris addressed. Oh. Along the driveway, you mean? Yes, yeah. along the driveway. Well, I mean, and I'm, I'm gonna turn this over to Bob pretty quickly, but um, Mr. Norris has also been very articulate in um, wanting to maintain his access to the driveway. And therefore, I think there's been a lot of reluctance to do anything on that side property line okay. to maintain his access. With that said, I mean, I guess there's room there for some plantings along the side of the driveway right next to the house. But if he wants to maintain his access to the backyard, there's not many you would have to put in. Response, Bob? Yeah, I'm gonna go to the grading, go to the grading plan. One of the challenges, as we talked about, is the fact that everything on the Norris property drains to the Haynes property. Everything on this particular lot, I forgot the owner's name, drains into this location in here. So the grading and drainage plan, we have taken basically the new driveway, and that is all pitching down towards to get captured in the rain garden. We're picking up the between the property line for the Norris's and the edge of the roadway, a drainage swale to pick up what's coming off of the Norris property and continuing and draining onto the Haynes property and collecting that in this headway in here that then discharges into the rain garden. Maureen's point about having access where he currently has to parks his boat in the back. I think we saw his trailer out there during the sidewalk. That's gonna be a challenge. If we have to start planting within that swale area to accommodate the drainage, it's gonna be difficult for plant material to be planted within that without it causing adverse impact to the drainage. One of Mr. Harding's comments were is that if anything were in terms of providing access to either side, uh, that the drainage has to be maintained. So in terms of physically driving into that area, we require probably an additional culvert and an apron put in there, which is not the responsibility of this applicant to do such. The opening is there. But to do any planting along that side, that would have a, a potential impact on the drainage that's flowing through that particular area. So, and that's pretty much why we didn't put anything in those two points, the drainage and his ability to at some point get access on. Uh, can I ask, who decided for the fencing along the Norris property? Was that by the request of the Norrises or was that of your own volition? Well, as I indicated, we were trying to figure out where to do some landscaping along that side and preserve some of the trees. That whole strip right now is actually grass that the Norrises have been maintaining as part of their backyard. So to put in some sort of planting in along that edge where there is all lawn, in some of these other areas there are trees on the other side of the lot line. So our planting plan is kind of reinforcing what's on the other side. There are no trees here. So we felt that a solid fence was more appropriate to give an immediate effect rather than putting in smaller plants, which would take a period of time for a density to fill in. Uh, certainly not gonna be planting 15 foot high shrubs going in there that's gonna create the sense of a, of a fence. So that the fence was the most reasonable expectation we had in terms of being able to achieve a, a decent buffer along that edge. Yeah. I, I would say that um, I appreciate your use of native plants, at least in the buffering, and I think um, there, seem, I, there was a, a good use of native plants, at least for buffering. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that was that was a nice uh, addition. Uh, yeah, I don't see how adding buffering along I mean, the, the, the entryway now has no plantings, or very limited. I think they, in fact, said that they kept it fairly clear, uh, except for the couple of trees there, I guess. Yeah, this, um, this tree that's being saved, this one right yeah. down here in the corner that has to come out. And there isn't and anything. A couple to, on this side that has to come out that are actually within the area for grading and drainage. Right, so some of this is kept out because performance of the drainage, which we know is seems to be one of the major issues that the neighbors want to make sure is addressed, which it seems like you have. Um, and it, there isn't anything to stop, I assume, the neighbors from also planning their own screening of whatever type they want too. So um, I know that sounds kind of crappy because it's basically then spending more of your money to do that, but 
Um, you know, we all live in neighborhoods, unfortunately, and have close neighbors often, as I do, and um, sometimes you do what you feel comfortable with uh, to protect yourself, so. Go ahead, Peter. <coughs> a, uh, an observation and a question for Bob Metcalf. <coughs> It was my impression from reading the, the documentation and the site walk that the applicant is providing some engineering solutions to the drainage and, and wetness exist, uh, situation that exists today as the land now is, is situated. So with the, with the swales and the, and the culverts and the construction of the rain garden, it looks like it is going to um, improve the ability of that land area to deal with flooding. At least this is my impression. Um, and then more to the point where one of the gentlemen said what happens in a really bad situation. There is a grate and a storm drain at the far end of the rain garden, is there not? Yeah, there is right down in this area here. Right. The elevation is fairly high on that, but that whole area was draining down towards that area, but that's been disturbed over the years, so I'm not sure exactly what the elevation change is in terms of uh, accommodating for the water. But that being said, you know, we oversized the rain garden. Uh, the comment made about doing the engineer study, Mr. Harding in his report basically stated that the size of this lot, the current software programs that do calculations, it wouldn't work on a project this size. Yeah. So we basically had utilize the formula based on the square footage of impact uh, to size the rain garden. Actually, we've oversized, so probably on the conservative side, uh, to accommodate the runoff coming off of it. So. Anything else? Jim, did you have something? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Bob? Any other questions for Bob? Any discussion? No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Once public comments closed. Sorry. My recommendation on this, because there are plan modifications that we've not seen, would be to table this to next month. If you guys agree or disagree, speak up. Could you identify the plan modifications that you're concerned with? We haven't, we haven't, other than this up here, we haven't seen the planning plan. There are other changes in this letter of changes that were made to the plan. Maybe just notes, but we haven't reviewed them. And not that I'm questioning Bob's I'm pretty sure they're there, but uh, we usually review the plans in detail before we go on to the next step. So that would be my recommendation. To wait, you say? To table this to next month so we can review the plans, the final plans. I guess I'd only offer that they were really only notes that needed to be added to the plan. Okay. There were four notes that were requested by Mr. Harding. We have put those on the plan. I can give you a copy of what's no. actually on the plan. I know that. And the other was a correction of a date in one of the uh, last revisions that we submitted. It said 2019 rather than 2018. So that was a minor correction to it. Um, I'm looking to you see, guys. I would agree disagree with that. I would not support that because I think the notes are minor enough and we have done this before to proceed. That's my opinion. So, and so we would need to update our our motion to include something for review by staff of the plans. Go ahead, staff. <laughs> this is a great example why I encourage applicants not to revise plans after staff has made their changes, their comments. Uh, I believe that Except, with maybe one exception, all of the, the changes that Mr. Metcalf has proposed are already included in suggested conditions of approval. Um, the only one I missed was the 
the water district letter and that actually has been submitted tonight. So I, I didn't think it was coming, I just forgot. Um, but if the board does want to move ahead, I, I would suggest that you think about your new process of work going through the motion and then taking a, a recess to make sure your findings are all in order before you make your, your final right. vote. Okay. I don't think there's any harm in pushing it to, tabling it to next meeting myself, but um, just to make sure we have that little bit of extra time. Yep. Peter? Uh, that's my feeling. Yeah, I, I find myself agreeing with Jim. I, I don't see anything that's material, uh, new and material that we would uh, achieve any benefit from by, by forestalling it for uh, a month. Okay. So I, I would personally be prepared to vote on this this evening. Okay. Yeah, I agree with Jim. We're out, we're out uh, man there, Andrew. <laughs> well, I think I will go with the majority. So um, do we want to take a recess to make sure we have our ducks in a row here and everything lined up on the, our findings? Yeah. yeah. So what, 10 minutes? Okay. Okay, we're going to take a 10 minute recess while we, these conditions and these motions are two and a half pages long, so we want to make sure nothing is omitted based on this new information. Do we physically go to another room or? Uh, you can do it right here. Okay. Yeah, I know it's a little awkward, but. Okay. <laughs>
Good. Thank you for your patience. Peter? Yes, uh, a motion for the board to consider. <clears throat> Findings of fact, one, Jennifer, uh, Stephen and Jennifer Haynes are requesting a private access permit to create adequate road frontage for an existing lot located at 28 Woodland Road, <clears throat> which requires a uh, review for compliance with section 19-7-9 private access ways. Two, the proposed lot shall be improved with only one dwelling unit and related accessory buildings and uses. Three, the private access way, <coughs> excuse me, shall be located within a dedicated right of way having a width of 40 feet, which exceeds the 30 foot wide minimum. Four, the sub base shall be constructed with gravel meeting uh, MDOT specification 703.06 type D with a depth of at least 15 inches and having a width of at least 18 feet. Uh, five, the travel way shall be constructed with a minimum of three inches of crushed gravel having a width of at least 14 feet with the remaining width of gravel based uh, loamed and seeded. Six, within 10 feet of the edge of the street paving, the access way shall be paved with three inches of asphalt paving. The maximum grade within the first 50 feet from the edge of street paving shall not exceed 5%. Pavement radius at the intersection with the street shall be 20 feet. Seven, gutter drainage along the street uh, shall be allowed to sheet across the face of the intersection and the proposed design will keep drainage from the private access way from running into, public, into the public street. Uh, eight, a turnaround coupled with a requirement that the proposed home will be sprinklered and the distance of less than 150 feet from the home driveway along the private access way to the nearest public road, Woodland Road, <coughs> meets the requirements of the fire chief. Nine, subject to a condition that the applicant add eight, excuse me, <coughs> that the applicant add site distance information to the plans and based on observed conditions of the September 23rd planning board site visit, the access way is located so that site distance conforms to the requirements of the <coughs> subdivision ordinance. 10, the private access way shall serve only one lot. Uh, 11, the plan, this is a, text change from what the, uh, our printed memo has on it. The planning board has not reduced the requirements of section 19-7-9D4 to a lesser standard and has received a letter from the Portland Water District uh, with regard to the uh, water needs for the property. And will accept a stormwater management plan, which is not. I was going to add a separate one. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll wait for a friendly amendment from Jim. 12, adequate disposal of sewage um, shall be provided as evidence by connection to the public sewage system. Uh, 13, a building envelope is depicted wherein the house and accessory buildings will be located on the lot demonstrating conformance with the setback requirements of the district in which it is located and any natural constraints and that the house site will be buffered from abutting residential purposes. I'm, I will entertain a, an addition by, from Jim uh, for the next uh, numbered paragraph. Okay. Do I go now or do we have to, do talk, we, have to we have to go back and vote on what he just uh, did? As part of my motion, I'm willing to consider okay. what he's going to add. Is that right. suitable? I have two of them. You're going to add, you're going to add to, uh, friendly to conditions. Yeah. Okay. So that was 14 you just did? 13. Uh, 13. 13. 13. You're going to add 14 with okay. regard to buffering. Okay. 14, the buffering. Um, I guess some background information first. Uh, why am, uh, should I give the background information? Sure. Okay, well, wh when we during the site visit, when I was there, I made a mental note to see what other buffering, existing buffering was there. And I saw very little, if any, between houses. I'm sure there are exceptions. I did not walk each house, but from the walking around, I saw very little buffering between houses. So based on that, I offer this friendly amendment. 
the proposed buffering plan is consistent with the, with the surrounding neighborhood properties. That would be 14. And 15, the owner has, the applicant has provided a stormwater management plan to adequ adequately address rainfall. Um, so go ahead, beat that up, and let's <laughs> let's get it right. <laughs> well, let, let, let's let's continue the rest continue. of the motion, okay. and then yep. we can we can wordsmith any of yep. those. Uh, go ahead. But I, I I do accept as part of my motion what Jim has added. Yep. Uh, f what is now 14 will become 16. The application substantially complies with section 19-7-9 private access ways in section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Uh, therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Stephen Jennifer Hayes for a private access way permit to create adequate road frontage for an existing lot located at 28 Woodland Road be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised to address the comments of the town engineer in his letter dated October 10, 2018. <clears throat> Excuse me. Two, that site distance measurements be added to the plans. Three, that the town to be granted a sewer easement for the existing sewer line located in the uh, within the private access way. Four, that the building envelope be labeled on the plan, and that a note be added to the plan requiring that the principal and accessory structures must be placed within the building envelope. Five, that the applicant sign and record a road maintenance agreement in a form acceptable to the town attorney. Six, that there be no issuance of a building permit or alteration of the site until the plans and materials have been revised to satisfy the above conditions and submitted to the town planner. Do I have a second? Second. Um, I have a question. Jim, can you just read yours one more time? Both of them? No, the, the uh, one about the drainage. Um, The applicant has provided a stormwater management plan to adequately address the rainfall. I think it should say drainage. Okay, now, I was struggling with the right word to use in short notice, so. Do you, do you agree or disagree? Do you, guys, do you guys agree? I'm fine with me. Mm. Okay. Yeah, to address the stormwater, drainage. to address so you drainage. Really should be drainage. Drainage on, the, right. drainage on the property. Okay, drainage on the, drainage on the property. Okay. For the records. Let me say it again. Correct. Would you please repeat the whole thing? Okay. The, the applicant has provided a stormwater management, management plan to adequately address drainage on the property. Okay. Thank you. You got it? Yes. Okay. Uh, Maureen, is a technical matter? Does that sound like it's within reason? Yes. Okay. Okay, on um, number seven, I believe, I believe you misspoke. Gutter drainage along the street shall not be allowed to sheet across the face of the intersection. I believe you said shall. I, you might have, I stand you might corrected. have yep. not heard you correctly. So. Thank, no, I... Uh, um. I think I said shall, meaning something different from what the sentence says, and you're, uh, thank you for that correction. So, you okay, Jim? Yes. All right. I've got another. Go ahead. Number six, the plans say 20 feet, or it just is 10 feet a minimum kind of thing, number six. Right, so, so the, the town standard is 10. Okay. And they're proposing more than 10. Yeah, they had 20 feet down. Right. But, I guess. Uh, I have, Go ahead. I just want to confirm that um, finding number 13, the last word was properties. To be buffered from abutting residential properties. You're, that is agreed, that's what you intended? I'm sorry, can you repeat Number 13? Please? Number 13, I, I heard a word other than properties. Oh. Why are you asking? I just want to make sure that's the word you really meant. We want to make sure we get it right. Buffered from residential properties. Pro properties. What did I say? Okay. Something else. Oh. That I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't properties. 
I it don't think it was property. Well, pardon my incoherent mumblings, but I, I admit to actually read it as it, as it reads. And once again, as a technical matter, the, the buffering language that we've proposed being consistent with the neighborhood standard, is that seem to be a, a you know, technically appropriate way to address that issue? Yeah, I, I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? We got it all? These are getting tougher and tougher. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? It's unanimous. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right. Where's my agenda going? Next item, Apple Tree School Expansion Site Plan Amendment. Pamela Mullen is requesting amendments to the previously approved Apple Tree School Site Plan to expand the school located at 44 Two Lights Road from 20 to 40 children. Request, request a, a resource protection permit to alter RP2 wetland for installation of underground utilities and amend the lot lines between lot two and three of the Spinnaker Heights subdivision. Section 19-9, site plan completeness. Section 19-8, resource protection permit completeness. And section 16-2-5, amendments to previously approved subdivision. Carolyn. Yes, yes sir. Um, I'll be recusing myself from this as I am the architect for the project. All right. I was about to tease Bob about being John, but you're not, huh? You're John. I am. I'm trying to remember. I could have. <laughs> I'm sure there was some teasing. Um, I'm not John. I'm Julia Frederick. I'm a landscape architect with Mitchell and Associates, and I will be representing the applicant, Pamela J. Mullen, owner of the property in the school. So I'm here before you, um, as mentioned, because. Ms. Mullen proposes to expand her preschool, Apple Tree, from 20 students to 40 students. And in order to accommodate the additional students and staff, she proposes to renovate an existing attached barn uh, to create an additional classroom with a small, small expansion off the side of the barn. Um, the project also includes an expansion of the parking lot. Um, so, as stated, I'm here before you to obtain completeness regarding our site plan review application, resource protection permit application, and amended subdivision plan submittal. So up here is a plan of the Spinnaker Heights subdivision, which was created in 1988. Uh, the Apple Tree School lot is lot number three, um, 2.4 acres. And uh, the address is 44 Two Lights Road. It lies easterly of Two Lights Road. Um, and here in pink, you can see a small slice of property that's in the process of being purchased by the applicant from her abutter, lot two, uh, the wards. And that purchase is so that the expanded parking lot will have adequate, adequate um, space for circulation and additional parking spots. And that's why we're submitting the um, application for amending a subdivision plan included. Okay, so here is the existing conditions. Um, here is the school, which is also a residence, and the attached barn currently used for storage on the first floor with residential space above. Um, Let's see, um, the rear or easterly portion of the site does contain wetlands, and um, here you can see the limit of the wetland go passing through the back of the barn, and um, in 1996, a resource protection permit was obtained after the fact uh, for, to address filled wetland in this area, and the filled wetland is now all lawn area in the play yard and behind the barn. Um, so, Albert Frick Associates has confirmed for us that all wetlands on the property are RP2. And off the property, there is an RP1 with a 250-foot setback, but that setback does not extend onto 
the mulling property at all. Um, so in terms of drainage, the existing lot and part of the street flows down the lot towards the building, um, but it is impeded by a planting bed and it then flows into a crushed strewn drainage trench right here, after which it is in, directed into a subsurface pipe, which carries the water out towards the wetland. Um, I mean, sorry, the woodland and back. And the applicant maintains that this drainage system has worked well for many, many years um, in all seasons, and water never reaches the building. So in the existing parking area, there's no striping. Um, staff park and residents park back here along the barn, and um, when parents and caregivers come to drop off, there's really never more than eight or nine cars in this lot at one time because uh, there are carpools, um, some people bicycle or walk their kids, and um, many parents park cars and then walk their children in, but some also drop off uh, by the entrance. So also, you should note that the existing leach field is way over here in the southern portion of the property, and the existing septic tank is here. The connection runs this way. Okay, so moving on to the proposed expansion site plan. Here is the existing building and the barn, which is proposed to be converted and also have an additional 225 square foot expansion onto the barn. Um, and you can see here is the triangular portion of land that the applicant is currently in the process of purchasing from the wards right here for the parking lot circulation and parking. Um, okay, so, uh, as I mentioned, the school will have an increase of 20 students with an, and an additional two staff members for a total of 40 students and six staff. Uh, so you should note that we are applying for the resource protection permit because when this expanded portion of the barn is to be constructed, this contains bathrooms and the septic line will run behind the barn so there will be temporary construction disturbance on uh, digging the trench for the septic and also digging the trench for the foundation of the expansion, although the expansion is outside of the wetland. Um, okay, and we are proposing to mitigate this temporary impact um, by returning these areas to their current condition as lawn. They're all filled wetlands that are lawn. Um, and also we are going to provide a native vegetated rain garden on another part of the filled wetland, which is currently lawn, so that'll serve as a restoration of a portion. Um, there will actually have to be additional temporary construction impact because there'll be a force main connection from our proposed septic pump here over to the septic tank across the lawn. Um, okay, so. Uh, the expansion of the barn is here, 225 square feet, and this parking area is going to contain 18 spaces uh, with three dedicated staff spaces in the rear. Um, in order to minimize traffic and parking in the lot, Apple Tree will expand drop-off and pick-up hours uh, and stagger drop-off and pick-up times for, children, for different groups of children. Um, so just to describe our circulation system, this is an entry-only lane with a sign demarking it. You can travel down here, either park or drop off in front of the school, then turn and exit through this lane here, which is also marked as exit only. Um, there will also be an apple tree school sign in this island here. So we're putting a native shrub buffer between the parking lot and the street to soften uh, the view of the parking lot for passersby. Um, and so in terms of lighting, there are existing lights. There are downward directing floodlights on the barn and on the school, as well as some door lights. And uh, we measured the foot candles at the property line, and the range is all well below the max of um, 0.5 foot candles. 
So there is adequate lighting existing at night, even though the school is not open at night, just in case residents or teachers are there after hours. Um, so in terms of utilities, the only utility we're proposing is a septic connection from the uh, proposed barn bump out, which will include a student bathroom and a staff bathroom. So the septic will go around the back of the barn and connect up to the existing tank. Um, in terms of grading and drainage, uh, the majority of the parking lot will continue to drain towards the front of the building to be intercepted by that plant bed and the crushed stone trench, which carries it through underground, through the breezeway and out that way. Um, however, the portion of the new pavement will drain beyond the structure down this way and be directed into our proposed rain garden. Um, Okay, in terms of traffic safety, uh, Randy Dunton from Goral Palmer has assessed site distances and um, he has asserted that the entry and exit sight lines uh, meet both town and state standards. Okay, onto the architecture slides. This is the existing school and residence with the existing barn and here is the existing barn. The first floor is used for storage. The second floor is residential space accessed by the stairway here. Uh, the, the barn is connected to the rest of the structure on the second floor through an enclosed walkway. And on the first floor is a, a breezeway boardwalk open to the air. Um, OK, so here's just a zoom in on the existing barn. Most access comes through the barn door but you can also access the staircase upstairs in the breezeway. Um, let's see here. So this is the proposed renovation and expansion of the barn. As you can see, the wetland limit is passing back here. And these brown shaded walls are all new walls. So we will retain a bit of residential storage in the front portion of the barn. And the back will form a classroom with staff office, staff toilet, and an accessible student toilet right here. Uh, the architect has made some improvements to the current design since this plan was drafted. So there will be probably an additional exit, a doorway to the outside over here in the staff office area. But in terms of circulation, students can come through the breezeway and enter into the classroom this way. Um, let's see. So in terms of programming, the architect tested various scenarios that would you know, allow for renovation of the barn without expanding the footprint. And none of those really were feasible. Um, in terms of putting some of the program on the second floor, the fire, uh, the cost of the fire department standards would have been prohibitive for redoing the stairway and installing a sprinkler system. And um, in terms of locating the bathrooms elsewhere in the school, the, due to the layout of, of the rest of the school, the bathrooms just would have been way too far for children to manage um, on their own. So let's see. Um, OK, so the, the proposed addition is 225 square feet, and it is outside the RP2, just outside the RP2 line. Um, in terms of materials, the ex expansion is going to completely match the existing. Same siding, um, same coloring, and just showing you there will actually probably be an egress door right here according to the architect. Um, so, okay. Um, so we've received comments from the town planner, the town engineer, and the code enforcement officer. And we take no issue with any of these comments. We've reviewed them. And we've already added some notes and plan elements uh, that were requested. We're currently working on responding to other comments. And we'll include them, the information and the plan revisions in our next submittal. OK, thank you. So I will open this up for 
Public comment regarding completeness of the application. Anyone, and uh, by completeness, we're looking at, do we have the information we need to move forward to the next phase of this project? Um, and um, so if anyone would like to speak, if you could come forward and state your name and address, and you have three minutes to uh, comment. All right, seeing no one, I'll close the public comment period and open it up to the board for comment and questions. I have a question, sorry. I have a question for Maureen, actually, based on your memo. Um, I'm thinking this is just a typo. Uh, it was a question of, that there was no requirement for um, uh, trip valuation and that you had then written down based on data available town staff are comfortable that the additional traffic will, will cause safety issues? I'm assuming you're, oh, will, not you will not cause, so that just based on my will guess. Will not, yes, that's okay. a typo. So you, you're comfortable with, with that? Yes, and to and not the, require the basis for that is that um, most of you know that the town is finishing uh, an update of our comprehensive plan. Um, one of the pieces in that is a transportation chapter. That chapter includes traffic counts. Uh, my, my information regarding traffic counts on Two Lights Road is that there is a tremendous amount of capacity for Two Lights Road to absorb more traffic um, in a safe manner. Um, nonetheless, there was um, no information that was submitted by the applicant that was able to access the same information I have. And I believe in the written comments that you've received, the applicant has stated that they're going back to their traffic engineer and they're going to get that information for you. So I'm not, having, I'm not expecting any surprises, uh, but I still think it would be nice to have it in the record. Thank you. Any other questions? I just want to make sure I understand uh, um, the comment on in the engineer's letter number six, which had to do with uh, runoff from the bulk of the paved area being directed to the front. That that is what you're saying is being a, has been the current methodology has been adequate and the expectation is it will continue to be adequate or are you beefing that up in some way? Uh, it's just because we just got this tonight, yeah, so definitely. I haven't read it. So. Um, yes, the expectation is that for the current square footage that's draining towards the front, that will continue to be adequate and we're going to add more information on the plans to show the engineer how this drainage is working at a finer scale to keep water away from the building. But, um, but we, for new areas of pavement, we will be directing and showing more information about how it's going towards the rain garden. Okay, I'm looking at the one for the ones I starred. But I, all right. Does anyone want to make a motion? Since you don't have any questions or comments. <laughs> We're all so Go ahead, Victoria. Mm -hmm. uh, motion for completeness. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Pam Mullen for expansion of the Apple Tree School located at 44 Two Lights Road from 20 to 40 children, which requires a site plan amendment, resource protection permit, and subdivision amendment be deemed complete. The planning board grants a waiver from submitting a storm water runoff plan prepared by a professional engineer as required by the resource protection permit requirements. Due to that is less than 10,000 square feet of added impervious surface proposed and the limits of the stormwater modeling software that do not capture this amount of impervious change in the submission of a stormwater management plan. Do we have a second? Peter? Any further discussion? Go ahead. Tell me more about the traffic study part of this. I know mean, you said we don't expect any change. I mean, two lights can be a busy road, but. Yeah, it, 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 it can be a busy road at times, but what you're looking at is how much capacity 
the road has to absorb additional traffic at the times you expect there to be traffic from this project. And based on, you know, the, even with the traffic we see, that seasonal tourism traffic, I have no expectation that there's gonna be any concerns. But and nevertheless, it would be nice to have a professional engineering assessment in the record. And you are providing a traffic management? Are, we, are, are you providing a trip study? On yes, we will be providing more information from okay. traffic engineering okay. in our submittal. All right. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, uh, I was getting worrying, this is maybe for you. The, um, if we vote tonight in completeness, it's apparent there are odds and ends from the engineer's letter that they will be responding to. Is, is this within our normal envelope of stuff that we'll leave to be fixed later, even though we, we vote on completeness at this, at this meeting? In, in my opinion, it does, um, and I'm gonna read from item paragraph two in the town engineer's letter. Mm -hmm. We understand that the board will be conducting a completeness review for this project at their oncoming, upcoming meeting. Many of our following comments should be considered beyond the completeness level. Right. But they always leave in and have been provided here to facilitate future submissions or reviews of the project. But remember, it should be noted that additional submit information may result in additional review comments. So they always say that, you know, if you provide us more information, that may raise more comments. Well, my own reading of the, the follow-on comments are things that are we can basically deal with completeness this evening. I didn't see anything that was <coughs> of sufficient substance to not the vote on The town engineer is saying there's enough here that they believe it's complete for the items that they review. Uh -huh and that, as we always say, completeness does not equate to adequate. Right. Anything else? All those in favor? It's unanimous. All right, next item uh, to, oh. oh. I do have questions now that we've found it complete. Oh, oh okay. I was gonna talk about the sidewalk, but okay. <laughs> I, I, um, there was a question about uh, the uh, septic system, and I'm, I just wanna clarify, I'm not sure if I heard it, but are you putting in a new septic system or are you keeping the one that's on site now? We are keeping the, the septic tank that's on site and the septic field that's on site. And we are just um, adding a new line and a new pump station, which will by force main connect to the existing. So that does not go to capacity because I'm looking at the existing capacity is 392. Uh, the state rules would say it should be 792. And I believe I then read it said the recommendation that a new system is designed based on the 792, but we'll only do that if it fails. So am I, that's correct? That's correct, that we'll be submitting a new design. So um, so one of the points the um, code enforcement officer said is that um, things could change. He put it right in there. He goes, things could change and the house could reach its capacity. So I was wondering, is there any other business being operated at this property? Not, no. None. There's not a short-term rental being operated at this property? No, okay, so those ads are incorrect. Oh. Hello, my name is, hello, my name is Pamela Lamont, 44 Two Lights Road. Um, are you for the rental? Is that what you're talking about? I'm not sure. Yeah. So two years ago, a year or so ago, we thought about um, renting it out, but we didn't decide against it. You might want to take your ad down. If you Good. looked at it, it's expired, so it does clearly say. Well, okay. so you're willing to take the yes. ad down yes. so I don't have to send yes. the code enforcement officer out to prove that you're not running a short-term rental and then the sewage, the yes. septic capacity yes. and all that. Okay. I was concerned about septic capacity because yeah, I saw your ad, I just didn't dig into it, I guess, deep enough. Okay, I'm okay with the septic because I thought there was another business being run there. Okay. Uh, I actually have a related question to that. That was actually one of my other issues. Um, how do you know when it fails? How do you know when it fails? It starts smelling. Well, I mean, 
it, here's the problem, right? If you have a septic system that fails, well, A, how do you know? So if it, if it backs up, that's certainly one way it would fail. At that point, what's your, what are your options, right? You're running a, a daycare. Um, you, you get someone out there and you build a new system ASAP. Yeah. It happens. Hmm. It's yeah. not ideal. That's my point. Yeah, there's quite so, a bit of land there to, to expand uh, the, yeah. the septic fields. Is there, is there ways okay. to test it, you know, periodically to, to know that it's performing at a standard that hopefully would prevent that? Go ahead, Maureen. But just to kind of add some more to the code officer's concerns, um, I believe it was Al Frick who evaluated the septic system, and, and he's considered incredibly uh, credible when he does that. So there was no concern about the functioning of the existing system. The concern was that right now um, there is a very low flow of water being generated by the home. That's the way the people who live there now um, operate, which is great. But if at some point in the future uh, the people who are there change and say a family with young kids or a different environmental ethic move in, the amount of water being generated by that, that home could dramatically increase from what it is right now. And that was what there was a concern might push the septic system over what it can reasonably handle. So right now, it does appear that with the current waste being generated by the current homeowner, plus everything that you expect to have from a 40-kid daycare, there's the system is operating in, in fine condition. If there are changes, then yeah, you would have to look at that. And that's why the code officer insisted that there be a design for a replacement that met um, a three-bedroom home that maybe had kids and showers happening more often. And that's just put, in the, and he says that's put in the, in the plan so that yep. anyone going forward, to, if they purchased it, they would know that this was not adequate and there was a plan for improving, okay. Yeah, and, and you know, if, if you have remaining concerns, certainly you can pursue those. I just wanted to give you some background. Yeah, I just, uh, it would seem like a kind of a terrible situation to get to a point where, um, it failed, and, and I'm, you know, everybody knows how long it takes to get anything done now, for, in terms of building, construction, whatever. That, you know, I don't know how long it would go that it would remain in a failed state before it could actually be addressed. So, that would be my my biggest concern related to that. But um, it sounds like if they're if they're satisfied with with it at this point that. Um, That's okay. okay. Jim, Peter, anything? Any questions? Can I <coughs> go ahead? Then? Um, so as Maureen was kind of fleshing out that um, statement from the uh, code enforcement officer, so recommendation a new septic system is designed. So is that in the plans, that it a new is, septic system design? It is not in the plans yet. It will be in our next submittal. Okay, and then um, I didn't find, and maybe it'll be in the next, a note should be put on the plan stating the new design will be installed if the current system fails? Right, we, we have been putting these notes on the plans and you'll see them in the next submittal. They weren't in the previous, yep. Okay, thank you. Anything else? When do we want a site walk? Oh, that's assuming we want one. Um. Someday when it's not raining? <laughs> yeah. Novel idea, let's see. Can we check the weather report? Yeah. Within the next week, I assume. Probably be good. What's the Tuesday? What's the submission? Friday, sunny. <laughs> What's the submission schedule for? Um, hang on. So the next meeting of the board would be November 20th, and the submission deadline for that would be Friday, November 2nd. So um, you've got almost two weeks. You've got, yeah. So. I've got more flexibility, so I don't want to be the one to choose than, the time. But not necessarily more mobility? No, no. <laughs> Do you okay. want to go for evenings? Um, evening? It, it depends. I'm working some evenings next week, so it depends. What's, what's an what evening you're not working? I am working. Not. Not working. I'm not working. I know I'm working on the 24th. I'm working on the 30th. And I might have a meeting on the 31st. So. There's the 22nd? 
Is a Monday night? Yep, I'm not working. 22nd? I'm just throwing dates out there. That's fine. I'm yeah, yeah, that could work. I, I, I can't the 22nd. Fine. You can't do it? No. Okay. The, evening, the evening of the 22nd? Yes. No. Evening of the 22nd. I have a commitment. What about the 23rd? Oh, 23rd, you said? 23rd, I think the you're all going to be a we little might busy. Have, we might have a meeting. Okay. And you said the 24th, you're not available. Yeah. And the 25th? I'm free. 25th? Okay, that's a Thursday. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm away, but some other, I'm out of, out of state. Well, there's the 18th, which is this Thursday. I can't. Can't do okay. it. I could do Friday. The 19th? Is it Friday, this Friday? Can't do Friday. Okay. I can do Saturday. I can do Saturday. I can do Sunday. Do so we want to do it in the morning? Any, you know, do, what time, Pam, what time do kids start showing up? For school? Yeah. What about the 23rd? Is it was that not? Well, if, if you're meeting at seven, in theory, you could have a meeting at 5:30. Okay. I'll buy you dinner. No, uh, October 23rd. 23rd. We, we don't have a planning board meeting. You might. Yep. Who? In in an hour, you'll know whether you are. Oh, for the other yeah. thing. Ah, uh, yeah. But if we did a 5:30, yeah. that's fine. It won't take more than shouldn't take more than an hour. Yeah. On the 23rd. Tuesday, yeah. October 23rd? Yep. 5.30? I can do it. Yep. That can It'll work. be dark by 6.15, 6 6.30. Right. <laughs> okay. Now, how does that work in your schedule? Works for us? Works for John. Works for John. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I forgot to ask the applicant, how does that work in your schedule? Yeah, and 5.30, uh, all the kids will be gone by then? Okay. All right, okay. 5.30, 23rd. 23rd, 5.30. All right, um, next item would be Scheduling the public hearing. Scheduling the public hearing. Nobody will feel motion for that. <laughs> Tabling this till the next meeting for yeah. public hearing. We need to table and, this, don't you? Your staff didn't write you a motion, so you're going to have to like wing it. Wing it. Okay. Just, be, just um, use the first part of the first motion. Okay, this be is all. That. What's that? Just do, be it ordered that and just insert tabled to the regular November 20th meeting at yeah. which time the public hearing will be held. Okay, stop me when I get off, when I go off on a tangent here, all right? A motion for the board to consider uh, uh, be it ordered based on uh, the plans and materials submitted and the fact presented the application of Pam Mullen for expansion of the Apple Tree School located at 44 Two Lights Road from 20 to 40 children. Um, which requires a site plan amendment, resource protection permit, subdivision amendment, be tabled to the November 20th, 20th 2018 planning board meeting. At which time? At which time a public hearing will be held, Held. period. I'm sorry, I'm used to t t uh, talking my text, so I put in punctuation when I talk. Uh, do I have a Ignore second? that period. <laughs> so Victoria seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. We're good. What was my agenda? My agenda keeps getting buried. So thank you. Joe, are you coming back? All right, I have uh, open, I'm not used to seeing people still here when we reach they're this point. They're waiting for the workshop. Oh, they're waiting for the workshop. Okay. All right, I was gonna offer a public comment period uh, for items not on the agenda, but if we're waiting for the workshop, then I guess we can move right on. Do I have a motion? We need to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Okay, do I have a second? Jim seconds. All those in favor? It's unanimous.